Hi guys, welcome up to the cabin. So this video is going to be a video that a few of you asked for. It's uh, coming from a couple comments on my previous solar system install video. So some of you wanted to see how my panel was wired inside the cabin. I had shown you in my previous video how it was wired out in my solar shed everything running down into my inverter but I never showed how it was ran inside and connected to my panel inside. So this is going to be that video showing you how my panel is wired and all my plugs and my lights, all the lights that I'm running and how the inverter has been performing for the last year. So I'll give you a quick little video and hopefully it will help anyone that's uh, out there and just trying to learn before they start wiring up their off-grid cabin. So my disclaimer is that I am not a licensed electrician. So this is just how I did my own cabin. I don't know if it's up to code. I'd be surprised if I could pass an inspection but it's been working fine for me for a year. I've had no trip breakers, no uh, no issues with any of my plugs or lights. Everything has been running smoothly for me so that's my disclaimer. Uh, if you're gonna do anything the way I did it just make sure you have a bit of understanding about electricity and you're confident that you're not going to burn your own cabin down. So with that said I'll show you the panel. Here is the panel. It's just uh, in here in my kitchen on one of the interior walls. It is the same type of panel you would find in your house. It's just a smaller version. So it has I think like uh, 14 spaces for breakers but I only am using two breakers. Here's my main power is coming in right here and it is since it's 120 volt is all that I'm getting from my inverter I have it only powering this uh, side of the panel so only that's why the two breakers are on this side it's only getting 120 volts to one side of the panel the other side over here is dead this is my 100 amp main breaker so if you look at it you've got a main breaker and then these are my two 20 amp breakers that power the cabin but this is my main 100 amp So the reason for having two breakers is I have the cabin pretty much split in half with the plugs and lights. So if one of these breakers fails, at least I'll have power and lights to the other half of the cabin. So that's why I've got two. They're each 20 amps and they each power half of the cabin's lights and plugs. Over on this side you'll see this is my grounding bar. All my grounds are ran to this and then this main bigger uh, copper ground you see that's running down and outside and it is going to a grounding plate that's buried in the ground. So you always want to have your uh, power grounded to earth so you can use either use a grounding rod it's a big, I think, five foot rod that you pound into the ground and then it's connected up here with the ground wire. Or in my case, since my ground is rocky, I used a grounding plate. I had to dig a hole three foot deep and put the plate in and bury it and that is what this grounding wire is connected to. Over here is the neutrals. So neutrals go into this bar and then the hot wires run to 
one to each of these breakers and then the one from the main is ran to this uh, leg of the panel. So that's just a quick overview of how I wired my panel in here in the cabin. Hopefully that uh, helps anyone out that's kind of confused as to how to connect an inverter to your panel. And obviously the plate, the cover here, I took it off for you, it goes on right here because this is live. So everything, you wouldn't want to touch any of this. So one thing I can have to say is make sure every connection is tight. All of these set screws in here clamp down tight. Everything, one single loose connection in here can cause a lot of problems and it'll be hard to find what it's doing. So make sure before you connect everything up, make sure it's, everything is screwed down nice and tight. All the breakers are in tight. All the wires connecting everything are tight. So that's my panel. And now for the lights and the plugs. I have two plugs in the kitchen. One's here for once there's going to be countertop. So this is my countertop plug. I got another plug behind the stove over here. I got a light, LED light up here. That's I took down just because I was doing the wall. I haven't put back up. I got two more plugs over here. Two plugs over here, one's here, one's over on this wall. Got two plugs in the bedroom. And an LED light in here. And then in the bathroom, LED lights, LED lights everywhere. But then, in here is a GFI plug. So, because it's close to water, anytime you have a plug that's going to be near a sink, make sure it's a GFI. So it'll trip if water somehow, something drops in the water or splashes over here, it'll trip the plug. It's another safety feature just so you don't electrocute yourself. So, if you got a plug in the bathroom, Make sure it's a GFI. How do you know it's a GFI? It's got, you can test and reset here. It's got an internal, I guess it's an internal breaker. I haven't put my face plates on, but it's light switch. So, for those that were asking what what do I run? What is what is my solar system powering? I've got these lights up here that you see. These are LEDs. So I got one, two, another one up in the loft. That's three of those LEDs. And then one in the other bedroom, four. Those are seven watts each. So when you're doing your lighting, make sure you do LED lighting. Even though they don't look the greatest, like you wouldn't, they're not the best for a cabin. They only take 7 watts, so that's alright. I can have, I rarely have more than one of them on at a time because they light up the cabin pretty much uh, just one of them each room. So... 7 watts, that's compared to a 60 watt normal bulb, that's your saving power. This light in the kitchen, it's this uh, light you can see down here. So it's got three bulbs, they're three and a half watts each, they're LEDs as well. So that's 10 watts there. The bathroom light. LED this is 12 watts the combined or 13 watts combined so all of my lights 
are, if I had every single light on, it would be, those are seven each, so that would be 28 watts. It'd be under the 60 watts of one normal old bulb. And that's if I had all my lights on, which I never do. So lighting isn't an issue when you're doing solar. It's, uh, you can have the lights on as much as you want. It's not really going to drain your battery that much. And as far as using power, I charge, I have a tablet, I charge my laptop, I charge, these are all my Ryobi batteries, they're plugged in whenever they're low. All of the laptop, tablet, all my camera batteries, everything that I'm uh, using up here, I can plug that in and I could have it charging all day. It's, it's uh, not much of a draw. I think the laptop charger is the biggest and it's about 40 watts or 50 watts. So all of this stuff doesn't have much of a draw on the batteries. The 400 watts of panels easily handle that. The biggest thing that I have that uh, uses power is the chest freezer. So when it's running all day, if I go three days or two or three days without sun, I'll have to turn the generator on. So that's the biggest draw is just having the freezer running nonstop. Now that the temperatures have warmed up a bit, I'm, I had it unplugged because it was so cold outside, it kept everything frozen. So now that it's starting to warm up because the spring's getting closer, I've plugged it back in. So now every I'll just have to watch if I don't get any sun for a couple days I'll have to go out and check the batteries and I might have to start the generator and charge them up. But other than that if I was just using lights and charging my laptop and tablet it's, I could go for a week without having to put the generator on. So as long as the sun would come out once a week it would be fine.